All right, I uh, thought I'd record a little voiceover um, for this extremely sped up version of the study that I did. Uh, this is a study of Monstead, who's one of my favorite, probably is actually my favorite landscape painter uh, from the uh, 19th and 20th century. Um, so I started this with a warm underpainting, this kind of orange uh, underpainting that you can see there. Uh, the reason for that uh, I tend to, I like doing underpaintings when I'm emulating sort of painterly work in general, and I'll usually choose a contrasting color uh, to the sort of main uh, palette, I guess. So in this case, you know, it's a winter scene, lots of blue grays uh, in there. So having that warm underpainting, uh, if you space out your strokes or leave a little bit of kind of uh, gap in there, it means that you're going to it's going to pop through a little bit and give the whole piece a sort of warm vibe, which I'm which I'm really interested in. Um, right now, I'm just taking my time, sort of sketching in the the composition, just to make my life a bit easier. I don't always sketch uh, when I'm doing studies. It really depends what I'm looking for. Um, but in this case, you know, because I wanted to spend a little bit of time, I think this ended up being three and a half hours, roughly. Uh, in total, um, you know, it was worth spending the time at the start just kind of sketching this in. Uh, this is me just making some notes on what the lighting is like. This painting, as you can probably tell, was done on my Twitch channel, hence the stupid overlay, which I <laughs> zoomed in on. Uh, so if you want to watch the full thing, you can. The VOD's still up there. Um, I leave my VODs up for anyone to watch. Uh, so if you just go to twitch.tv slash paulscottcanavan, you can see the full version here. Uh, this is sped up, I think, 1,500 times, hence why it's uh, manic speed right now. <laughs> I actually took my time quite a lot with this and just kind of enjoyed it. So once we've got the, the sketch done, my goal really is to start blocking in the colors uh, and, and basically just trying to fill the, the whole canvas. Not worrying about detail, just kind of focusing on the main forms. Now, one of the reasons I love Monstead so much, uh, similar to other painters that I like, like Thomas Moran, um, is that he uses grey uh, throughout his pieces in really interesting ways. Grey is one of those kind of intriguing colours which acts very differently depending on the colours around it. So, for example, in this case, with uh, we've got the, the blue sky, allegedly, <laughs> and the sort of warm snow. Um, now, in reality, those colors are mostly gray, but because he's placing sort of warm colors around it, if you have warm colors around gray, uh, it's going to make the gray look blue. If you have cool colors around gray, it's going to make the gray look warm. Um, and I was kind of talking about that a bunch when I was doing this study. So like, for example, the sky here, like I said, is gray, uh, and the snow is a kind of warm gray. But Definitely grey. <laughs> There's a lot of grey in this painting. Um, I've been obsessed with the way Monset paints snow for forever. Uh, There's just something about the way he blends those kind of cool grey shadows in with the warm bounce light. That's the kind of orange light you can see on the underside of a lot of the snow surfaces. Obviously it might not be super easy to see in this video, but um, when I zoom in near the end you'll see it more. And that's kind of a key uh, part of my painting process in general, is that I don't zoom in until later on. Uh, I, I was speaking about it on the stream, but for me, the thumbnail is by far the most important part of the image. So by working out, uh, working zoomed out, sorry, uh, it means that I can really just focus on making sure that the image is working before worrying about zooming in and getting into all those kind of noodly little details that really aren't as important as the, the piece working as a whole. So I stay at this zoom level for most of the painting and then really only zoom in for the last half hour, 40 minutes maybe, out of the full, you know, three and a half hour piece. You can see already now that all the colors are blocked in, it's already kind of working which is good. <laughs> like, 
helps to alleviate some of the, uh, the stress around doing it. Uh, so I'm just starting to work over the top of my lines now. This is something I always do. My process is, is pretty consistent at this point. Um, at a certain point, once I've blocked in the full piece, I'm working underneath the line layer, um, I'll switch to starting to paint over the line layer. Um, you could obviously just erase the lines. I think a lot of people do that or mask them out. But for me, there's something... I try to minimize the number of layers I use. Like, I'm, I'm, I want to get as close as possible to just working on one layer. Because um, I think it it taps a little bit closer to that um, the traditional feel that I'm looking for in this. And to be honest, I do the same with my magic work or any other client work where I can. Uh, I'm very much a proponent of fixing mistakes by just repainting them, uh, which is definitely less like time uh, efficient, I guess, than you know if my workflow was do a bunch of masks and have like lots of different layers and be able to remove things and add things and move things around. But for me, I, I think because I grew up as a you know traditional painter originally, and I've always loved traditional art and, and approaching things from a traditional sort of mindset. Uh, it just it's just more fun for me, you know, less efficient but more fun. And I think the the end result you get from doing that is closer to what traditional work looks like, where you know you've got marks from when you painted something out because it sucked. <laughs> um, you know, like here, for example, I've, I've now actually flattened this down to just two layers. I've still got my underpainting layer. Um, and the reason for that still existing is that it means I can erase from my uh, active layer or whatever you want to call it um, and, and have that kind of orange still pop through. But like moving that mountain there, uh, you know, it, it means it's not on a layer. I have to just like move it <laughs> and like repaint around it and kind of re-blend it. And I think that just adds to the, I don't know, adds something to the overall texture of the piece. Maybe it's just in my head. It's probably just in my head. <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta do what makes you happy when you're, when you're painting. That was very Bob Ross of me there. That's uh, <laughs> emulating the king. Painting complex forms like trees is difficult. Um, we were chatting about it a little bit on the stream. Usually my approach for that is, and actually for any kind of um, like heavily textured kind of complicated form, is to focus on the big shapes first. Uh, with trees, I like to kind of do them in two paths. It's like, first of all, I want to get the, the trunks in there, the visible trunks, just because they're like obviously the kind of big main uh, identifying aspects of the tree. So I'll kind of sketch them in. Then I will loosely bring in the kind of main shape of the foliage. So like the kind of big lumpy brush stroke for the main shape. And then only after those two things are in will I go in and add the sort of small details, but I try and keep them almost like hierarchical, where like, uh, you know, they, they're less important, so they, they are less bold, I guess. It's, it's, it takes a bit of practice. Um, I didn't nail it here because I didn't spend long enough. Like, this painting study could have been 10 hours, honestly, and, you know, I still wouldn't have scratched the surface of what Monstead did. Um, yeah, you can start to see it now that I'm uh, finally starting to zoom in a bit. Um, this is this is the fun part, because now I'm actually uh, actually getting to see what the painting looks like properly, because <laughs> I'm zooming in on my reference and I'm zooming in on my uh, study. And basically, I almost work like left to right, you know, just, just copying, or copying, just working from that reference, I mean, essentially copying, uh, and just refining the stuff that I did. I don't think studies have to be perfect, um, for me, the reason to do a study is to, I guess, just spend time with a piece of art that you like, and through the process of recreation, it's more valuable in some ways than going outside and drawing. You know, all, all kinds of studies have their purpose, you know, plein air studies outside are great, doing, you know, studies of people, 
doing studies of film stills is one of my favorite things to do. We do that on Study Buddies quite a lot. Um, they all have their uses, but the, the, the key thing with master studies, where you're looking at the work of you know a great artist, is that you can actually look at how they rendered reality in a way that, you know, otherwise you're just kind of guessing or, or going about it your own way. So, um, I love doing these because it means I get to spend time in, you know, Momstead's brain, basically, you know, spend a few hours in the brain of someone who, who you really respect. Um, the other artists that I chose for this session uh, were, who did I have again? Shishkin, uh, Bierstad, Maxwell Parrish, just a bunch of great kind of landscape painters. And if you don't know, this uh, this is done on my Study Buddy stream, which is a uh, weekly art study stream that I run on Twitch. It's every Saturday at 4 p.m. GMT. Um, and every week I just pick a different subject, basically upload a bunch of reference images to a folder that everyone can access, and then we just all do our little studies. Uh, it's very chill. It's becoming rapidly more chill, which I'm enjoying. <laughs> um, so yeah, this was uh, ultimately, I think, a four hour long stream that I was just working away on this thing and dicking around in different games and stuff. <laughs> so now we're finally getting down to like adding little details. Um, and again, that's the hierarchy of kind of uh, brush strokes. You know, we start big, we work our way down over time. Uh, and, I, and I never get super detailed with the background, you know, I want to keep most of the highest contrast to the foreground and the highest detail to the foreground. That's usually how you want to approach stuff in illustration. Um, you know, the, the detail, the most detailed part of the illustration is going to be either the subject, who's usually going to be relatively foreground anyway. Um, that's kind of mimicking how a camera works, you know, a camera, we're going to focus on our subject and everything else is going to be a little bit out of focus. Um, and then everything else falls off basically through the piece. So in this case, because it's a landscape, we don't have one focus, you know, this, if this was a photo, it would be, um, you know, F5 or, or whatever, like there's not, there's no, there's no, uh, depth of field in this, right? Um, so instead we, we mimic that, the kind of the way the eye works or a camera works by just letting the detail fall off the further you go through the scene, you know. The further away we get from the camera slash eyeball, <laughs> the less detail there is overall. Um, and so like a lot of the stuff in the background really is done. Like it was done an hour ago. Um, and I find that quite satisfying actually, especially with like, let's say if I'm working on like a magic illustration or something. Um, there's nothing I love more than like, I, I tend to work back to front anyway. So like when I paint that sky in um, or that background, being able to be like, okay, this is done. I don't need to touch this for the next, you know, three days I'm gonna spend painting this thing. And yeah, here we go. Just adding the final kind of details to the right side of the composition. Hopefully you can see the difference in the sort of the colors that we have in the snow here. I added a little more, more pink. Uh, maybe than is in Monsed's version, and that's just because I really like painting sort of pinky tones into snow in general. Um, but they look pretty similar, I think. I think I managed to pull this one off, mainly because of the time spent, honestly. Um, but yeah, the key takeaways, work back to front, uh, or work big to small, sorry. Um, and just take your time with it and accept that, you know, when you're, when you're getting into doing any kind of study, especially something you're relatively new to, like landscapes or something people don't do a lot of, um, it's going to suck sometimes. <laughs> and a lot of the time you just need to keep going and kind of push through. And then if you get really frustrated, just give up and come back to it the next day, do a different one. If you do these every, you know, if you do a study a week or a couple studies a week, you'll level up really quickly. Anyway, I hope this was interesting. Uh, obviously, watching the full version would be a little bit less chaotic, because this was obviously very choppy. Uh, but thanks for coming along. I uh, really appreciate it. I also want to say a quick thank you to my subscribers and my patrons, who uh, I, uh, keep me going, let me do this stuff, <laughs> um, justify me spending more time teaching, uh, which I love doing. So thanks to these people. And once again, if you do want to watch the stream, come along. Uh, it's every Saturday at 4 p.m. GMT. Have a good day. Thanks very much.